Brown here to Sivo TV's broadcast of Sivo Main back. Season 3. I'm Helium and with me is Orbit. Hola a todos, estamos aquí con el segundo juego en la serie uh, Faded contra Union Gaming. Y soy Orbit aquí con Helium. Exactly. Couldn't, I literally couldn't have said it better myself. Ten seconds remaining. As uh, we are here in it to the draft. This is the only match for the night here over Dire at Sivo TV. Back. You're watching at uh, twitch.tv slash playsivo1. So do make sure Radiant to follow the channel so we can bring you that partnership with those resolution options. It's going to help out everybody, Dire but into the draft we go. We've got Abaddon, Pogna being banned out, as well as a Weaver mm -hmm. and a Lich. First pick, Visage. Radiant Interesting that the... Uh, I mean, it's kind of cool that they banned Weaver, it's con uh, really considering it a threat in the last game. I actually expected them to ban Abaddon as well on Union Gaming, but instead Faded deciding, you know what, we don't really want to play this hero. And uh, you said that Jabano really likes to play only that hero what in the last game. Well, yeah, he's going to play something else. Uh, I'm pretty excited. He played a really good Abaddon last year, uh, last game. He did indeed. I told you, he's like the best in the yeah, world. Man, with that yeah, hero. he played it really well. I'm really impressed. All right, we've got Union Gaming, though. Uh, they're able to pick up remain. two heroes here, of course. That's how it works. They could go for a Death Prophet. Other notable Reserve picks. Uh, probably the Clockwork Vino. stands out the most to me. Or Venomancer. Yeah, yeah, maybe you're going to see it 1 2 here. Team pick. I think so. With the precedent we'll see how you set last Thursday with naming picks and bands, you got a lot to live up to now. I, I can feel it, though. It's coming. The Venomancer. So we're going Venomancer here? I think so. Um, let me think of anything else. I think it's the strong. It's just so good. I mean, it's so hard not to pick it. It was but, banned in the first round last game. Yeah. I feel like if they don't Ten pick it, Faded remaining. probably will. But we'll see. And if neither picks it, Five seconds oh well, remaining. then I guess I'm bad at calling things today. Ah, uh, you can't be right. I mean, the first picks are the hardest. Well, maybe not, because you sort of know what teams no, want. No, it should be the easiest. Yeah, I was going to say, well, I don't know. The other, the flip side of the coin is there's more heroes left in the pool to choose yeah. from. But yeah, I guess with the metagame sort of dictating the first couple picks usually. Yeah. Something pretty big here, because of the first bands, there's a lot of really strong offlaners still available for Faded to pick up. And that's probably what they're going to pick up for their second pick. Wouldn't be surprised with a Bounty Hunter. Wouldn't be surprised with a Timbersaw. Uh, there's still, like, just quite a bit of a potential there yeah well i think faded they have a visage right now i'd kind of like to see a dual core maybe you can uh look at something to run aggressive with that visage if clockwork goes offline then you pick up a gyro over on the side of farming all day every day and i think gyro really wins that uh gyro clockwork matchup nicely and then it's just another core who's going to get a lot of farm mm-hmm as hopefully some of the viewers come back. We've dropped about 50, but still right at 100. So big shout out to everyone joining up tonight. And of course, if you guys are watching, and oh, there's another good hero we kind of didn't mention. Crystal Maiden gets picked up second. But if you are watching in game, make sure to check out the stream over here, either on sivo.com slash watch or twitch.tv slash play sivo1, Crystal Maiden, and a life stealer, the next picks. Yeah. Um,. Pretty interesting, actually. This is a really Radiant early life stealer pick. Man. It's pretty good though because Weaver is already banned for them. Not only that, but I mean, life stealer does really well against Clockwork as well as Crystal Maiden. There are some shenanigans Clockwork can do once he gets his four staff, and in being able to kind of zone out the life stealer by trapping him with incogs, but remaining. still going to be really hard to deal with. I think the Fire CM picked up really early though means that I mean, Vino still in the pool and really good against life stealer as well. So. You know, you know who else is still in the pool and just very good against everybody? Elder Titan has yet to been picked up, I think, or wow. banned in both games so far. Uh, he was banned in the first yeah, game, I banned think. Banned in actually. the first game? That makes I sense. I think so. Um, yeah, Faded is going to be the one that would look to pick that up. I wouldn't be surprised if it's banned right now by Union Gaming, actually. A really strong pick. Honestly, Vino and Elder Titan are just two of the strongest picks right now still available in the pool. It's not really up to Union to pick it up, the Elder Titan at least, because, I mean, they already have a strong offlaner. Uh, in the clockwork remaining. and having both the clockwork as well as elder titan kind of leans towards a four protect one strategy remaining. which isn't really in the loop these days unless you're picking a gyrocopter but um at the same time i mean Reason faded still in need of an offlaner and it's a really good one at that yeah indeed I, d I don't mind maybe picking the elder titan as a support with crystal maiden i mean they could jungle they could get their levels together and they're a pretty strong roaming combination with the oro and the frostbite nova does a lot with Radiant elder titan by your side pick. but Maybe not the best, but something that they could work in if they wanted it. But it's going to be Puck banned out, Doom, 
thereby Union Gaming as well. And then it's going to be the Timber Saw as well as the Bane taken out by Faded and Sand King picked up. This I like. Pick. Yeah, this Mainly just because I like that hero. Big ultimate, fun to watch. Mm -hmm. So I think... Um, so remember in the last game that Union actually banned out the Queen of Pain. Because they banned the Puck, I'm kind of interested to see if they're going to pick the Queen for themselves or not. Uh, big, just based on the fact that they might value that hero pretty highly. Um, of course, the Queen of Pain ban could have been a ban because they wanted to pick TA. They wanted to kind of bait out a mid that TA would perform very well against. Because, I mean, TA versus Quap Five is kind of remaining. even, I guess. And it even favors Quap a little bit if she has sentries in lane, just so that uh, TA Razor isn't able dying. to mill dodge the poison attack from Quap. But, yeah, we'll see what they do decide to do. Not only that, but I mean, Quap synergizes very well with Sanking, and there's just like a lot of magic AoE damage uh, on Union Gaming right now. Indeed. Sorry, you could probably hear me slurping away at this iced tea. I just no, realized okay. that I was drinking it right next to the microphone. I'm jealous. But yeah. something that Faded has that does really well against magic is Lifestealer. I mean, rage. He's just going to rage and go on them, and there's very little they can do against that, at least until Clock gets like Radiant. some better. They pick up someone who loves magic, Rubik. Yeah. Can they go for yeah. a trifecta of magic lovers and haters and pick up an anti-mage here? Probably yeah. not, but, you know, for sake of magic... Yeah. It would be pretty fun. Or not yeah, fun I mean, if you're anti-mage. He hates fun. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But, I mean, they did pick up the I jungler in the last game. They could jungle the lifestealer and then pick it up still. Probably not going to happen, yeah, though. Yeah, that's, that's getting into some pretty greedy territory there. Although, actually, um, they could easily aggro try with the current heroes that they picked up right now. And this I would not like. Only that, like, AM versus Clock is really good for AM. So, you know. Also Gyro <laughs> as well. Yeah, Gyro. Would be I kind of like the Gyro. I mean, I, like I don't know. Bear. If I was going to pick something right now, I think Lone Druid is one of the best options for Faded. Um, well, his I don't lane, know. 1v1 Five versus Clockwork, can be a little remaining. scary at level 3 and 4. Mm, I think he's always okay, to be honest. Like, Razor if he dying. plays safely, he knows he's going to win from 5 onwards. Like, yeah, as soon as he's 6, when he's in the old form, it's pretty much like it's really hard for Clock to kill him without extra support in a gank. And you have so much. Uh, presence in lane in terms of farming with a hero as well as bear damage combined so it's it's very favored for the bear and not only that but once he picks up an orb of venom on the bear clock has to be really careful with how he plays so i think lone druid right now would be a really good pick Our world. od <laughs> that od so, so, team yeah ben. i mean it's the same strategy that we were talking about before in the first game, which is kind of pick OD when you're the last person to pick before a ban phase. That way you can deal with any of the potential big heroes that do well against OD. And uh, almost a guarantee that Razor is probably going to be banned. Could be remaining. Viper, though, as well, uh, for Faded. Yeah, there's, I mean, a few heroes to pick up versus Five that. Uh, I mean, namely, just to run through the list, which I think pretty much stays at four. Viper, Kunkka, Razor LD, time. and Razor, probably the best heroes to put against that OD. Uh, Razor, probably the one most likely to be worked into the Union, or Viper, into the Union gaming lineup. Yep. Um, something pretty interesting to note, actually. Uh, I'm reading in the chat right now. There that goes ET. What is... Dire yeah, I was going to ask you to translate something, actually. Cool. Uh, Union Gaming is only playing with three of their regular members. They actually have two stand-ins playing right now. I believe. That I was aware of, yeah. Radiant team. So, uh, they only had two in the last game. And then this game, they have three members. I think Zero Kun, Zero is, uh, Kun came back to their team. Pick. They had a, had a Hakunaru. Oh, God, I'm embarrassing myself now. <laughs> Started with an H, and he went a Midas on a Shadow Shaman. So I remember him, but I cannot pronounce his name, apparently. It was Hakutron. There you go. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, uh, he played decently on the Shadow Shaman. I feel like it was a really hard hero to play in that game, though, because, I mean... Ten to seconds to remaining. Everyone. But uh, yeah, as we see the Shadow Fiend being picked up last, a really strong pick right now. Really interesting though as well, because OD kind of destroys him, I think, in lane. Ooh, with Darkseer. Sure. Sorry, I like to type into the chat there. Darkseer picked up a hero that, for some reason, has really fallen off the map, despite being very hard to push into and, I feel like, does well in 1v2 lane situations. I think it's because you can be a lot greedier with what you pick in a 1v2 situation. Um, Clockwork and Timbersaw have pretty good kill potential as well as just do really well in those situations. And they're a lot greedier picks. Uh, Darkseer, of course, was really good in 1v3s because he was able to get what he could uh, out of that lane, uh, even though it was like that strong of a lane and he could kind of keep the supports there by putting pressure uh, if they were to rotate using double ion shells and everything. 
Uh, whereas like a hero like Clock or Timber kind of get destroyed by 1v3s in the sense that they're pretty much rendered remaining. useless. Uh, a lot more useless than Dark Seer, of course. But now that like remaining. the extra gold per second, the XP sharing and everything, you can be a lot greedier with your offlane picks and even go into like dual offlanes or aggro tries a lot more. <laughs> Corey, how nice. And then Jabano, not so nice. <laughs> uh, but does Jabano have fans? Do we know these things? <laughs> I know I just, I'm a Jibano fan, so yes, he does have fans, but I don't know. Giving shoutouts to them. Maybe he's just giving shout out to me indirectly. I'll take it. <laughs> and uh, Benji, of course, saluting his fans as well in Spanish there. Uh, a lot of you Jeep fans and supporters up in the chat right now, so thank you so much for watching. And once again, uh, Siguenos, follow us on stream, please. Uh, play Sivo1, of course. Uh, is the mainstream. You can also check out Sivo.com for more information in the upcoming games that we will be casting, as well as just the general standings of the current league. Uh, both of these two teams doing very well in terms of the standings. I believe both are in the top 10 right now, and uh, look pretty uh, confidently towards going through the playoffs, which will be happening in about three weeks' time. Uh, or the league uh, ends in three weeks for the playoffs, at least. Yeah, it's week six, so yeah, this week being the third, so this starts off week six, and then there's week seven and eight two yeah. matches a week monday and thursday at yeah. 8 p.m central are the times so that's when you can find us over here on play Sivo one which is predominantly dota 2 twitch.tv slash play Sivo is going to be counter-strike global offensive and of course as you saw in the news section on the in between pages we've got battlefield 4 call of duty ghosts coming up as some other titles which you'll be able to catch on these multi-gaming streams but the easiest place to find it all is Sivo.com slash watch, that watch page, the new landing page for everything and more to come on the site as well in the future. So stick around as we get into the game. Introducing the teams, I will take the Dire to start it off. We've got Corey farming up on this Lifestealer, South, Quelling Blade, and a Stout Shield. Not looking to miss any last hits. Dark Seer going to be handled by D Chow going into the off lane and supporting up Corey in the top lane will actually be Visage. That's going to be Theory as well as Rubik played here by J Ban Yo. And then at the mid lane, it's going to leave Rhyme oh, on see. an OD. Are those little, little yeah, Theory definitely playing there? kind of a position that he normally well, doesn't play on do the support days. Visage there. But Corey uh, playing his signature Lifestealer, definitely one of the best heroes in his arsenal of heroes. Um, but over on the Radiant, actually that's a really cool word before I go on to... Uh, before I go on to introduce the Radiant side, but Soul is going to be on the offlane clockwork. He played a really good Timber Saw in the last game, very farmed in the end, uh, especially considering he was in the offlane, uh, just like in a 1v... I think it was a 1v2, yeah, because Doom was jungling. Yep. Uh, Sidoral, going to be playing a snowball -y hero again. He played the TA last game. He's going to be playing the Shadow Fiend this game, getting pulled two Tangos as well. And then over in the tri lane, it's going to be Benji there on the farming Murana, and PMJPS... Going to be playing the Crystal Maiden gets himself an Invis rune and looking to put some pressure on the mid lane relatively early. Maybe trying to secure some farm and some souls for his Shadow Fiend there in the mid. And of course, finally, Zero Kun making his way back into the roster here. Going to be playing in this game too. Of course, he's playing the Sand King. He is indeed oh. in the mid lane. You mentioned that matchup was going to be hard. PMJPS with an Invis rune looks to help out, but Jabano is there on the route because he was rotating down. He put that interesting ward you noted up top. And it puts another one there, spotting out that bottom rune, which finds them in middle right now, and they're gonna keep two here early versus Shadow Fiends. Are they? Yeah. No, he will. I think he's gonna be heading back top. I wouldn't be surprised if they put extra pressure with him, though. Yeah, and that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna wrap around, and this could actually be interesting. Nope, Sidoral sees it. Yeah, it is daytime after all. I mean, maybe hoping for a lift, but there's not a lot of damage early. Maybe if you duo lane it, you put it an early point into Arcane Orb, but I don't know. I don't really think it's all that good. But it, I don't know. It, you help your damage. If you take three stacks, even with one point in Arcane Orb early, you do a little bit more damage. I've seen it once before in Professional Dota. Mm. Um, I like how unfazed... Shadow Fiend was during that whole ordeal. He's trying to secure farm where he can. He's at 4 and 1 right now compared to the 7 and 2 of Odie, which at this point in the game is really good for Shadow Fiend, actually. Um, he's just doing a lot better than he should be. He's actually gotten the last deny as well as last hit, and he's farming pretty safely under tower without uh, any real contention from the OD right now. So things looking actually quite good for Sidoral. Um, he's actually got way more base damage right now, and of course those arcane, or excuse me, astral imprisonments aren't going to affect the last hit potential of Sidoral. Man, like, I eyes on this lane, because he's doing incredibly well so far. Uh, winning a lane, I didn't expect him to win this hard. Especially and when it starts 2v1. 
Yeah, um, the CM rotating, and that's why OD's playing a lot more scared. They don't necessarily see either support, because Zerokun is pulling, and then CM is rotating top uh, to try to get some D-words going. But so far, um, really nice. Right. Check this out. Look at that. Wow. This is a next level ward. Yeah, that's actually smart. Really smart. And actually, going to go on Dire Vision, it does scout out the rune. Yeah. Putting it way back, because of course you do drop it in the river, like we see there on that sentry, trying to maximize both of the D-Ward spots. But hold that thought, we're getting caught up by beautiful warding here, um, <laughs> as in the mid lane. We, well, we had to, okay. There were there were four in the mid lane converging towards yep. one another, but looks like we're going to back off. And it's Rhyme who is not doing, I mean, he's still doing well on this lane, but he's not doing well in the sense of, you would expect OD to have yeah. so much more, and for Shadowfiend to have nothing. Yep, um, and... I mean, CM actually missed a stack there, but it, she should have hit that. I mean, it's really important that she tries to stack as much as possible because, I mean, wouldn't it be amazing if not only does SF do very well in lane, but he can go back to a stack that he's not even needing to do. They could even do two stacks at once if he goes to the hard and the medium is stacked by someone else or something. I mean, um, like, he's already doing way better than expected staying on even CS against the OD, but he can actually snowball that much better with uh, a little bit more greed there coming the way of uh, support stacking for him. There, yeah, exactly. Sidoral proving to be quite a competent Shadowfiend player, as well as really wowing us, was it maybe a week or two ago on his Night Stalker play, with some interesting drafts that uh, Union Gaming pulled out against Team Magikarp, and then, I mean, even in the last game on that TA, doing very nicely uh, throughout the entire game. But checking out some of the other lanes now, up top, well, it is just a boring defensive trial lane, not getting too much done here versus Soul. He's up to level 4 on the clockwork, and this is maybe one of those matchups where Soul can find himself a solo kill with 2 points in battery assault, but not with Theory and Jibano sticking so close together. It's Corey farming he up still the storm. Could have. 25, and, yeah, he probably still could have, maybe a little more risky. Uh, but 25 and 12 there for Corey. Benjaz on the other side of things, carrying here on the Marana. 26 and 9 in the CS in that bot lane, left alone. Ranged hero with magic burst to take down the ion shell this is perfect creeps. timing for the smoke this is a really good time to smoke right now and he's actually going to get caught here this is the first blood in the mid lane wow doesn't get to put himself under either it's going to be zero kun landing that burrow strike and that's the first blood for sidoral not only is he farming better in a matchup that is really really hard 20 and 6 and he picks up the first blood against that and it's actually clockwork in the top lane that goes down at the base of his own tier one tower he got killed up by the visage so probably long range soul yeah. assumption there and a midas They're yeah, the reason that was such a good smoke gank was because the lane was pushing so far into the uh, Shadow Fiend's kind of side of the map that OD to farm had to stay around. I don't know if you can see my uh, drawing. I can, like you just have to tell me area. where it is. Oh, I see it in the mid lane. Yeah, so he had to stay around that area to be able to get any farm out. And then they just came at him uh, from the river side. I can't really draw on the river, but like down oh, there. <laughs> and it was just a really secured kill. I actually love that the river, like... It distorts the line. It's so awesome. So unexpected as well. Yeah. How the, how the water goes over it. Maybe not if you're playing on a brick computer, but luckily for me, I no longer am, and I can actually stream now, which is great uh, for casting, and hopefully great for you guys if you enjoy the casts or, you know, whatever. You can watch me on mute. I don't really care as long as you watch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, do you channel you the understand English? <laughs> yeah, th or that, you know, that that problem. We've got Orbit, multilingual. So am I, but have yet to cast a German team, so... Oh, nice. Well, it was. No, getting rusty. German. It's like Krankenhaus, which means, like, hospital. Hospital? Yeah. Well, you, you yeah, are correct. Was ist das? Das ist ein Eis. What is that? That is ice cream. That is ice cream, yeah. That's good. basically all I need to know in German. Ever. Pretty much. I mean, ice cream is very good over there. Yeah, and hospital is not so good. Well, I well, mean, in general, it depends visit. on your current state. Yeah, I guess so. But I mean, it would be a bad thing if you had to visit a hospital. Is what that, I'm trying yeah, to that, say. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> maybe it's a charity event. All right. <laughs> maybe. Anyways, six and a half minutes into the game, it's still Corey farming up here on the life stealer. Forty-one and thirteen. 39 and 16 here on Ben Jazz in the bottom lane, and then the surprise of this draft, you mentioned even on the, the captain's page or pick ban page that, oh, actually, top lane Soul in a bit of trouble, in a lot of trouble. He's going to be visiting uh, the hospital here, going back to base. Yeah. He Efficiency. Wow, okay. That's something to point out. Dies to the neutral, so he's going to be so pretty happy. So it's actually about an that efficient one. That was now. very, very efficient. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you mentioned on the pick ban phase that Sidral 
wow, what a risky pick for a Shadow Fiend. I mean, someone that can get shut down. And here he is, uh, third in farm, second for his team, doing very well. Actually, in terms of net worth, okay, he's in the same position, but still surprising. And wow, look at these stacks. Again, yeah. something we talked about. If they can uh, stack these efficiently with him doing well in the lane, coming back in here, maybe they could have done a few more. Actually, check out this camp over here, going to be stacked up. And that's, yeah, that's going to be it for the stacks, but still something that are all can fall back on and get even more. Fastest flash farming hero in the game, debatable, yes. but no maybe right. not. Uh, He's up there. With the exception of, like, a Battle Fury Maybe's AM, there's, like, certain heroes attack. that can do better, but yeah. definitely a really easy hero to farm, to flash farm with. He, he hits his stride earlier on that flash farming, though. I mean, there's yeah, there's Gyro, there's Anti-Mage, and there's Luna that probably ring out the highest flash farmers, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Maybe Profit as well, just because of how mobile he yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. At least in his ability to find farm, it's like really yeah. easy. You can always find farm with that hero. But anyways, um, some rotations now from Jay Banyo. <laughs> Jay Banyo. Um, he's going to make his way mid. He's actually going to wrap around as well. They're going to go on the clockwork yeah, yet clockwork. again. This is not Soul's game at all, this game. No neutrals here either to uh, make his yeah. efficient death. It's going to be Cordy picking up kill 1 0 and 1. It was Theory who got the first kill on Soul, and then a Seder, I believe, that took the next one. It's usually the Seder that gets those neutral kills. Oh my god, is, he, is Theory going to die? No. Wow, that's close. 21 HP. Sidoral comes up. Look at Jabano just behind the tier 1 tower. We're going to lift Sidoral, and yeah, he's going to go down. Sidoral under cover of Moonlight Shadows. <laughs> And yeah, it must be just for that. Nothing else is going on anywhere. They, they really want to maybe get, get more aggressive. Soul, you know, he's died a couple times thinking maybe he'd have more XP than you would think because he's been out in the lane, but no, not quite level 6. He's just 5, which is a fair amount. I mean, going 1v3, even in the current metagame, I don't know, level 6 at around 9 minutes isn't too bad. Yeah, but it's way better not to die. Like, that way is better. True. Um... But yeah, uh, just wanted to mention out uh, in the mid lane with the extra stacks, Sidoral getting a pretty definitive uh, definitive advantage. Uh, Rhyme, of course, still doing pretty well. He's actually going to go for a Midas. Uh, so he went Bottle Boots Midas. Uh, we saw a lot of Midas OD in MLG. Actually, RTZ was definitely doing that quite a bit. He loves yeah. it. He yeah, was doing that nonstop in NEL, and I thought that was just RTZ being RTZ, but nope. Well, it probably was still, but then he pulled it yeah. out on the main stage at Columbus as well. And it's definitely, I think the stat, it's just probably upped even more now. It's like 19 and 3 are ODs who go Midas as their first item. Yeah. Yeah, it was something like that. And then like hitting it before 10 minutes or something. Yeah, probably lines. a time window on that as well. Mm hmm. Yep, and uh, he's actually going to go into the jungle. Unfortunately for him, he is no SF, so these aren't going to be cleared that quickly. But. He's definitely finding some risk in the mid lane, and uh, definitely un not unwarranted as CM is just sitting there on the ramp. She was scouted by the creeps as well, because it is daytime, uh, so he's just like, you know what, let's get farm somewhere else. You feel yeah, slower. and we go over 10 minutes, so quickly looking at the farm, 72 on Corey, 68 on Benjaz there. We've got 65 That's on Sidoral in the mid lane, 52 here for the OD, as we mentioned, scurrying into the jungle now. Off lane are doing 33 for the Darkseer, so that Darkseer is getting a lot more in the off lane than is Soul on the clockwork here, 12 and 2. And then to look quickly at the net worth, pretty much the same as it usually is at this point in the game, unless there's a lot of kills out early on. But it's uh, Life Stealer leading by the, then the Mirana and the Sidoral. The Shadow Fiend here for Union Gaming. Gonna the Citadel. The Citadel. Uh, they're going to be there second and third, followed by OD and Darkseer. So three of the five in the top net worth slots are for the Dire. Checking out the gold. It's actually Faded, who leads by a little under 500 XP at 250, an advantage for Faded as well. So really, no one with much of an advantage. Yeah, I think your stream is lagging again, unfortunately. I'm getting some complaints here in Spanish, but hopefully once I, again I it looks I glanced over at it. It doesn't look too bad. Maybe some slight frame drops. Maybe because we don't yeah. have partnerships, so we don't get that premier bandwidth. And, of course, I know you guys are watching from other countries as well, so I don't know. Yeah, and the only way we can really get, uh, you know, some extra bandwidth Ooh, hook. is... First hook of the game is missed. Up. Yeah, uh, and actually they scouted the Observer Ward being placed there as well. Uh, there were definitely some pings, I think, from Jabano. So they're probably going to look to uh, deward this one right here. Yeah, good ward to take out. I like that ward. These wards around the mid lane are so key now with those nighttime yes. cycles. Yeah, 
Absolutely. I'd like to always put one there. Uh, usually if I'm on the Radiant, I like this one that they already have up here by the Ancients. And then, I mean, if you really, really want to double up, which I guess you should with the Shadow Fiend as your mid farming hero, putting, putting another one on the other side of the river, looking for that mid staging area where if you know supports are there and they're just wasting all their time sitting in the mid lane, that's so good. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's exactly that. I mean, the mid has become a really high area of contention. What is Jabano doing? I don't know, but I just missed it, so he's probably happy for that. But it's going to be Shadow Fiend that picks up that kill. That's the second. Both of his deaths have come at the hand of Sidoral. The presence of the Dark Lord, too strong. Shadows are taking us, but it doesn't matter. D Chow, going to find him anyway. Yeah. Um, I actually think he was invis, so that's why. Uh, Shadow Fiend was invis, got an attack off, and then two raises, and just, like, killed Jabano before he could really move. That would explain it. Yeah. I was a little bit confused. I was like, huh. <laughs> guess, guess he's dying. BKB but, yeah. almost completed. It's going to be up at 13 and a half, maybe 14 minutes here for Sidoral on the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a really good item for him, for sure. Because, I mean, OD, not really able to do much against him besides be very defensive on his uh, imprisons, which, of course, mean that um, he's going to do a lot less damage in fights with his Sanity's Eclipse. Unless he, of course, gets an imprison off on the SF before he pops his BKB or goes on someone else. All right, indeed. Uh, it's also going to be great through the whole game because once arcane orbs get up, I mean, that mitigates a lot, if not all, of the damage OD can really do towards you. So hopefully Sidoral is able to save some longer charges as the game gets later. Yeah. But bot lane, we've got Benjaz in trouble, going to be forced to leap for sure. We'll leap back over the trees, but Dechow's there waiting, throws a vacuum, and now the vacuum's off cooldown. That's a pretty big, important spell even at this point of the game. It's going to be Dechow. Nice that drops. They turn it around. Sole oh, second hook of the game. 0-4-2 right now. We need we need a stats man to get on our skill shot counter, which we love to run over here. I don't think it would have mattered either way. Uh, it would have been really easy for Lifestealer to rage TP because there wasn't anything really Well, Sidoral else, uh, was there with some right click. Uh, I don't know. But probably, I think he would yeah, just 1,100 HP and 9 armor right now. Yeah. So uh, while we mentioned everything, the ward that we had talked about before in the mid lane did get dewarded because it was seen. Uh, the only thing that is worrisome about having SF get a BKB this early, and obviously it's great to have him get it this early, is that uh, he's gonna lower have lower charges on his BKB way quicker. So that means that like maybe by 40 minutes into the game, if he has a four second BKB, it could be pretty bad because the OD will be doing that much more damage at that point. Yeah, I kind of thought that too. Like it's almost bad to get it this early, or or if you do get it this early, you need to be very very conscious about using those charges. Yes. Like using a BKB charge for one kill at 13 minutes, I don't think is even worth it. I don't even think it's worth it for anything right now, unless you're being like really heavily engaged by like visage rubik ds or something but yeah, like if, if you're gonna win a major engagement and take towers is about the only time yeah you really want to try to elongate those charges for lack of a better word just like try to delay using bkb yeah be and force that's gonna be picked up soon on uh rhyme here he just has it it's gonna go towards him now a lot of tps actually by both supports here into the mid lane and they might want to try to fight somewhere and somehow uh and yeah they trade towers uh it's it's the radiant union gaming picking up a mid tower meanwhile faded they take a bottom tier one so one for one but definitely a little bit more map control going towards the way of union gaming taking out a mid tower there this was really good by Corey tping out there he saw something was up uh they thought he would go over to be a little bit greedy and farm the jungle there on the radiant side but of course i think d chow had already done that so he just tps out right away expecting a potential smoke gank or something and so the support rotation and not only supports, but clockwork as well, rotating down, but to no effect, really. All right, and speaking of clockwork, he almost has a mech. And then speaking of mechs, we've got Dechow on the Darkseer. Picks his up now. So the off lane, we can see there with that early item pickup of the mech. It definitely went better for the Darkseer, as you might expect. With this uh -oh, matchup he found it. Yeah, that's a dead Crystal Maiden right there. Who It's, it's not her not fault. It's Crystal it. Maiden. And it's surprising that's only one death there at just 16 and a half minutes. Yeah, Crystal Maiden, uh, no longer a Maiden after that one. No. Really. Not at all. Sidoral actually going to get lifted. Yeah, going to go down. Maybe not. Pops his BKB, trying to get oh. his ultimate off, but the Basher just picked up by Cory, wow. takes him down, and that's exactly that the BKB charge you don't want. Arrow comes out, hits Soul. Cory looking to get another kill off of that. Will infest for the double, and able to scurry away there was Zero Kun on the Sand King, but that was a very, very nice engagement in the mid lane for Faded, forcing out that 10 second BKB charge, as well as a buyback from Sidoral, who was doing very, very well up until yeah. that point. 
no unreliable for 25 seconds. It's actually really bad to buy back SSF right now because you can't really flash farm anything. Not only that, but you're going to have low charges on your souls for the next fight too because you did end up dying. So it's not actually that worth it at all. Yeah, and you don't want to farm to get those souls because you get no gold. So it's kind of yeah. like unless you're going to win the team fight. And buying back to fight on Shadowfiend even before the change was never great because you come back with half souls. Yep, and Sidoral just doing the right thing there, waiting for his gold to come back up before getting the last hit on that creep, so he does actually end up getting gold out of it. But he's going to look to regain his charges in the jungle relatively quickly. Yeah, he's pretty much almost there. Uh, but yeah, they force out that 10 second BKB charge, they force out a buyback, yeah. they kill Sidoral, they kill another one, it's Cory with the big bashes. That Nicely bash done. He had man. just picked that up. I didn't mention it, but I had highlighted on stream, so everyone was aware. And yeah, Corey comes up big in that team fight. Eight to four. Checking out on the graphs as we're here at about 18 minutes. It seems to be almost a 3,000 gold advantage, almost a 5,000 XP advantage here for Faded. So not wanting to take this game into the very, very late. What was it? Almost 60, 61 minutes, I think, was the game time on game one here, which Faded mm -hmm. did manage to take, but it doesn't really feel like either team lost almost. Yeah, it was a really good game. Um, I'm really curious to see what Cory went. He didn't really go for the standard drums pickup on uh, what most life stealers go. So I'm really curious to see if he's gonna go like into an AC or something, or finish up an abyssal this early on. Oh my or gosh, that gank went so south. Benjaz did not wait for the frostbite, and he missed that arrow, which allows Darkseer to escape with only about 80 HP, maybe even less than that. I think one more auto attack would have killed him as well, but he got a stout shield proc off of it and lived. Um, so D Chow able that's... to scurry back to base in his Protoss armor. It's <laughs> true. If we're allowed For to Ow say that, I don't want to upset Blizzard. For Owie. For Owie. <laughs> but yeah. Um, anyways, going back into the mid lane, looks like a lot more pressure going to be going onto this mid tower. Um, something that we haven't really talked about and something I love because. I myself love doing it as a visage is just making sure your familiars are in the way of any clockwork hooks and that could be really vital for their team especially considering there isn't extra mobility yet on the clockwork like a forest staff or something because he still needs to go his mech first and actually a tp now uh to the bot lane by the nakes he's gonna look to kind of make a disengage happen on the bot tower which was being pressed by the radiant yeah, and the mech is actually finished up, and I, I want to mention, because I believe I saw the stat, I think it was Nahaz Dota, I think Bravo was the only stream with stats for MLG. The phase into the armlet and straight into a basher, it might have just been phase into basher, I'm not sure, it seems weird to never go armlet, was very, very rare on Lifestealer, but I think it had a pretty high win percentage. Yeah. Um, oh man, this Roshan is actually really good, I think. But the CM no, she knows. They've got the medallion. I was wondering. I was wondering where Faded's uh, Roche killing capabilities were because, of course, they're on the dire. They knew they were going to be on the dire this game. So yeah. I don't know. It doesn't matter. They picked the medallion on theory. Corey the now hitting like a truck. Hook. He needs to hit a hook. He hasn't hit a good one yet, and he's actually just going to not even think about it. I feel like his hook's broken or something. Needs to get it fixed because, I mean, there's been so many opportunities missed because of it. And he, like, sitting 0-4 in a clockwork is just not ideal, considering he needs, like, something. If you start doing poorly as a clockwork in terms of, like, your items and everything, it's really hard to come back with that hero. Yeah, you are going to hate your life, because it's a hero that you requires tanky. you to snowball and be tanky, because you have to initiate into an entire team exactly. pretty much every single time. You start to fall behind, it's... Not going to be fun. And he's already... Well, he picks up the mech now, so he's maybe got mm -hmm. one more shot to get into a team fight, start to get some kills and momentum for Union Gaming. But if not, he's at the point where Faded is just going to rip him apart every time Clockwork shows up. Yeah, like, it's one of those heroes that, like, doesn't necessarily need that many items, but, like, the potential of how much his hero does with the items that he picks up is, like, amazing. Uh, if he picks up a four staff, there's just so much more you can do with that hero. Uh, same thing with, like, an Agonims or even a Blade Mail, just being able to... Make sure no one attacks you for that time, at least. At least, like, if they don't have BKBs or rage. Yeah, exactly. Lock them into a cog match. The only thing they can do is attack you, and if you've got blade mail, well, then there you go. And I think yeah. four staff is probably... I don't know the stat, but I would assume when Clockwork is going up against Lifestealer, four staff is probably the most highly yes. picked up item. It's just Absolutely. so good. You mentioned it on the draft, so hook into the Lifestealer, hit the cogs, zone them out, 
and then you force staff out of the cogs and he's trapped in there for five six seven or eight seconds but not happening yet clockwork was forced to pick up the mech actually a big item comes out it's brown boots into a blink dagger here for the sand king and maybe that epicenter can do what they need to swing back the game in their favor that's crazy how is he gonna find the mana for this does he have it so he'll have 250 mana for the epicenter blink and then he only has one stun available really at his disposal uh, that's all you need charges <laughs> yeah it's true um i mean obviously it, more yeah, is better absolutely. but yeah um i kind of like this then in that sense as long as he's really conservative with his mana he can't really like do, he has do to, anything his... beforehand exactly like his engagement into the fight is literally an epicenter blink it's not like any extra utility basically and, and not, like even it, a smoke gang such as this if this escalates into a fight he can't really epicenter blink after a stun or if he gets put under once by od he's pretty much done like he won't have the mana pool and yeah no epicenter from here on out nice. because of course he's used that spell and oh, no oh, jabana with the clutch steal zero kun wants to go for it he can blink into the stun or just stun but there comes the mech and now zero could be in a lot of trouble needs the burrow strike but the birds come out to stun and jabano with the plays d chow drops a wall so dirty wow Man, jabano. jabano just making plays out of nothing he should have went down there and just like perfect execution by him to turn that around shout out to all of jabano's fans Sign me up for that fan club. <laughs> yeah, I think I was already in the fan club, so I guess I have the book. Oh, I will sign you up after this game. That's good. Uh, yeah, Zero Cunt unfortunately goes down, and they definitely clicked on him somewhere in that engagement, so they're going to know about the Blink Dagger now. And Corey, 23 minutes in, Phase, Armlet, Midas, Basher, Aegis, and he picks up an Assault Curus. The AC is online here for Corey. Yeah, He's got 25 armor. I like that pickup for sure, and I, I like going into Abyssal now for him as well. Uh, I'm trying to think of if going Heart is a good idea or not. He could actually go S and Y, and it would be decent too. But I like Heart as well on him because he's going to be so unkillable and do quite a bit of damage as well with the Heart pickup after Abyssal. Yeah, and he's a strength hero, so it's going to even add to his damage. Not quite like Sven with God Strength and Heart. Probably one of the best items on poor old Sven, who we literally never see. I think that list is more fun. Yeah, that's true. A little bit more you burst damage. Everyone dies. Nice kill there. Nice last hit on the tower by Corey. Uh, not really anything that UG really wanted to do there, which is kind of interesting. I, th I think uh, it's just Ben Jazz was trying to get this tier two, maybe to force out TPs, but. Yeah. I heal. There's one TP. And a fortify, but yeah, doesn't get the tower. Arrowed, maybe, but at the same time, if familiars were uh, doing the right thing, it wouldn't have. Oh, which they were wow. near there. Corey picks up another kill before I can even react. It's Soul on the clockwork that goes down. Sidorall with a BKB, but there's a nice vacuum wall as well. Sidorall will go down. Does He did get off his ult, I think, but Corey picks no, up a triple didn't. kill. And yeah, the ult doesn't go off. Funic picking up an item there. Nice. Man, Corey's bashes are just like on point. He was Our about to get the GG. off and gets bashed and just dies. It's just like. You gotta be frustrated at that if you're the Shadow Fiend there. Just yeah. rng man. Especially given his early game performance, it was incredible. And then he just gets... That was the second time he BKB'd up and then got immediately bashed by Corey. One time I think it cancelled a TP, that time it cancels an alt. Well, there's... Wow, Benjaz on the bottom capitalizes in a big way there. Corey diving now in it to this Crystal Maiden and will try to get her, but no, he's got a haster and he's gonna get out of those cogs somehow. Vacuum in by D Chow has the Aegis, so Cory will respawn here, and I think they're going to look to retreat. And yeah, arrow searching! Did they stun him into the arrow? No, they didn't. No. It was just a burrow strike. Cory backed off at the perfect time there, noticing that his rage was just about to go down, and not wanting to overcommit on just a CM kill, just like backing off, deciding it's not worth the kill there, being too greedy here, and losing your Aegis, and potentially a second death in a potentially uh, really bad situation and place for him, and goes just uh, backs off, gets stunned by the Sand King, which is okay, Loses his Aegis, which is also okay, but uh, comes right back up in a decent place for him to just back off and continue farming the enemy jungle. So really smart play there and really nice decision making by Cory. That's actually uh, really good because Aegis would have run out right now. Yeah. So they use it, they put it to use, they get the tier 3 tower to half HP, it's 13 to 5, oh, they lead by okay. about 7k gold, 12k XP lead here as Soul in trouble, Outworld Devourer picks up the Crystal Maiden, Lifestealer takes out the Clockwork, and Crystal Maiden died there in the top of the river, maybe trying to put out some wards, it's OD, it's Rhyme, that picks her off, has a sheep stick by the way. Wow, that's really farmed, uh, he's gonna do a lot of damage, for sure. 
But um, I was actually going to say, at this point in time, it's a bit less RNG luck uh, in bashing off before the SFLD because he does have an AC up, and Rage gives quite a bit of damage as well. So he's probably, like, it's 25% chance to bash. He's going to bash quite well, like, and... Yeah, well, you mean attack speed off the Rage. He like, attacks two so attacks fast. Already. And then, okay, he has an Abyssal now, so using the Abyssal and securing the kill on This Citadel, should be the death light. of Citadel. Yeah. It is indeed. Cory's going to pick it up. Vacuum thrown out for the hell of it. He knows no one else for the enemy team is around. And speaking of that, we've got Citadel almost getting a... Uh, what is it? A butterfly out there. Ben Jazz yeah, has done pretty down. nicely, but more so a utility build there. We actually see him maybe going to engage Ryan. He's got a Lincolns. Throws out that like 0.1 second stun when you arrow from that close. Maybe uh -huh. should have backed off. He's going to get sheeped and followed up here by Ryan. Ultimate. Yeah, uh, he throws it. He like, clips. Picks him off. Lincolns. Yeah. Not gonna help against that, and it was actually yeah. already procced. What did he pop I, it with? Yeah. He procced it with oh, an astral. astral. I thought he procced it with the sheep, and I was like, oh man, if he had used like astral or force to proc it, it would have been like a really sick play. Oh, zero Whoa. up the hill with the blink. It's not gonna take out anybody though. He's just too under leveled at this point. I mean, theory is stolen as well. He hasn't used anything yet. Level ten soul landing a hook though. It's gonna be theory. Who drops here? Rhyme coming back around on this, looking to attack out. And have you noticed every time Rhyme gets a kill? Oh yeah, bottom lane. Your mic is breaking out. It's breaking up. Oh, weird. For me. Uh, I was just hoping that he would cheap there, just for the kill. But a blink stun now from Zero Kun back onto Rhyme, and he's just gonna say, "Oh, Actually, oh, no, I'm dead." He does die, but that's fine. He was taking uh, two supports time. Every time Rhyme dies, he writes a score out on the minimap. If you haven't noticed, and he buys the time there. Corey Dechow as well as Jabon will pick up the tier three tower in the bottom lane. The racks now. Uh, yeah, being a pretty threatened, I would say. The melee is going to be dropped off now. Space created by yeah, OD exactly. there. exactly. You know the, uh, well, maybe we'll hold the thought. Nice. Deal. Zero Kun in nice trouble. Cordy gets first. another one beyond God, like 11 0 and 2. There's a double kill, takes out the Crystal Maiden. Once there were two supports, and then there were two attacks from Cory, and then there were no supports. That's pretty much how that one went. Yeah, man, Jabano doing so much work on the Rubik. I mean, his Rubik's just as good as his Abaddon. He's a really good support player. Whoa, I don't know about that. I don't know if he can join the fan club now, because his Abaddon is the best in the world. But yeah, man. definitely. That steal on Barrow Strike earlier. Rick, he's, he's been stealing it every time, and like, just knowing what to do and how to use each spell that he steals. He's like, uh, he's, he's just playing really smart. <laughs> Stream chat. Disbandarino. I don't know if they're attempting to write that in Spanish or if for some reason that is the Spanish word for disband, but it made me laugh. I don't think that Union Gaming should disband. They're an amazing team and they get it done all the way from Peru. Yeah, I remember that they're playing with two stand-ins as well. Right yeah, now. exactly. And they had uh, three in the first game and they took it to 61 minutes. Yeah, I don't think that's any reason to disband right now. They're having a rough time, but they're having a rough time against one of the better teams in SIBO right now, uh, Invaded. So, I mean... Nothing to be too sad about. It's definitely like something you can just look back on, watch the replay of your games, and just be like, oh, this is where we went wrong, this is how we can fix it. Yeah, and also, to note, I was just laughing at, I didn't know if that was Spanish or not, and if that is the Spanish word for disband, that's hilarious. But I doubt it. We can ask Orbit, maybe. No, it's not. <laughs> Probably not a word you would brush up on in another language, but... <laughs> it's not the Spanish word for disband. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyway, it's 22-7. We've got Faded. They've taken out the bottom racks at just a little under 30 minutes. They lead by 15,000 gold, 20,000 XP, and then methodically they're just going to rotate to the top. The tier 3 tower mid lane is almost dead as well. So there, there's two tier 3 towers remaining, and it's well going to be very, very hard for Union Gaming to, to win a fight here. But, I mean, on the high ground, they can maybe turtle up. Soul with a good hook, a nice epi center. Maybe they can win a fight, but killing this lifestealer right now who has an Abyssal, Phase, Armlet, AC, and working towards... Well, he's got a Javelin, so he's going towards an MKB because of the Butterfly on Citadel. Reminder, assists are a sin, says Rhyme, of course. He's 3-2-0, and zero, yeah. Exactly. Trying to get no so, assists. Yeah. Which, he I mean, actually hasn't been involved in really much, to be honest. Yeah. He's kind of just been playing PvE Dota. You know, that's a fun. It's fun to play that yep. style. Here he gets hit by an arrow, him. and he's dead. Well yeah, then, well, Corey the doesn't care. They don't. They don't need a visage. There's a ghost scepter up on the crystal maiden, which is going to buy a lot of time, but will go down here. The force, actually, the vacuum back onto a couple. There's going to go Ben Jazz dropping down. Rhyme trying to get no assists here. Needs to get this kill. 
doesn't get an assist on the clockwork. Somehow, I swear he attacked. He goes 4 2 and 0, and it's the mid racks in a trouble. Ryan <laughs> making a point but to get no assists. You don't want to touch Square right now. You honestly just want to run away from him. He's too big. It's too scary. I mean, in terms of net worth, he's basically double the highest on the Radiant. And he's just going to find someone and kill someone. I feel like Cinderall gets very, very up there. Not a single one of those was evaded. Or maybe Corey's just attacking so fast it was too hard to tell. But Rhyme gets an arrow and will force away from Ben Jesu. Pops up the phase boots, wants to chase. Can also use the Midas here in the meantime. One more attack out. He needs another one. Here comes Zero Kun as well onto D Chow. Freezing field goes out. And it's going to be Rhyme that drops to the Marana. And he's actually going to buy back for that. Four and three. Corey's already safely back in the fountain, healing up. And there's a buyback into completing the Shiva's guard. Is that you? Like that was you writing it, yeah. Just say, I don't no know one's if he, that he color. Just back so fast. I think he could have like delayed his death a lot with imprisonment, but just opting not to really, I, I guess. Uh, they're going to scout out the Roshan Rhyme is trying to do, and they could actually do something considering Cory isn't really close to being there. But uh, Cory picking up his MKB, of course, just, you know. Uh, I'm not too sure if they had a sheep uh on the sf in the last engagement because if he did that could be the reason why Corey was hitting every time no but. no uh Sidoral had bkb beat up so there was not going to be a sheep okay the, in that case yeah just getting yeah I, it was just really unlucky or maybe Corey okay, there was we attacking go. Yeah, so yeah. fast <laughs> solid okay. okay yeah he wrote it rhyme is on it no assists yet i got you and the yeah, roshan okay. is gonna go down Corey yeah, picks it up 15 0 and 2 he's 15 of the 24 kills here for faded yeah, like, just the, the definition of a carry, really, just putting the team on his shoulders this game. And, you know, he's he has the same net worth as the top two combined from the Radiant. And has a Halberd as well done. Ben just in much. trouble. Lincoln's popped and immediately sheep there by Rhyme. Rhyme has attacked. He needs to get the kill, and he will. No assist. Soul going to drop down a good, probably the best epicenter you're going to get. Andy was able to either Burrow Strike or jump out of that. Uh, might still go down here. Maybe not. And let's see. There's an assist for Rhyme. Yep. Um, really nice positioning by Rhyme in that fight, not getting close to the damage coming out from the Sanking ulti, and just being able to put out damage whenever he could. He's really big as well, having a sheep as well as Shiva's. Uh, and looks like a pretty steady, kind of snowball-y type victory here. It seemed really good at the beginning for the mid lane, for the Shadow Fiend there, but, I mean, Cory was just too big, and... They gave him the space he needed, and he's just right-clicking everyone. He's going to lose his Aegis right now, though. Oh, the Infest comes out. That was an odd choice to go ahead and use that. Andy is able to armlet toggle it back up. Sidoral going to call the GG, but yeah, I was even uh, expecting Sidoral here in the mid lane on this Shadow Fiend to just snowball out of control with the game he was having, but not able to really rotate out. And then Cory, and, and some of those early key engagements, Cory just let them have it, and I don't know. Picking up those big items in that, that mid fight, forcing out the early BKB charge on Sidoral and then killing him two times in a row. So, really nicely played. Yeah, just giving credit to, you know. I see. Rhyme, though, got an assist, so I don't, I don't care about Rhyme. <laughs> yeah, I called him a sinner. He also got outplayed in a matchup he should have won, so what a sinner. <laughs> That's okay though. I mean, still not a bad showing for the Radiant. They had really uh, a really good first game, I gotta say. And Spangler, of course, what a hacker system and getting an item. Uh, remember, guys, if you are watching on stream and don't have the ticket, the ticket is really cheap. I think it's only like one ninety nine or something in the Dota store, and uh, you get to see all these games. We're still pretty much like a little bit over halfway through our season, and that's not including playoffs. So there's still quite a few games left in Sevo. So be sure to pick that up from the store. Um, I mean, you see some pretty high-quality games, and you see a double Midas from the Rubik, of course, as well, during these types of games, too. But, you know, things yeah, happen. I feel like these two games are very evident of the plays that you're going to see. I mean, definitely quality Dota, something that rivals maybe even watching a, a game at MLG Columbus, or at least MLG Full Sail, so definitely very exciting. It's very worth it, and we hope you stay tuned. You can subscribe or, or follow, is the better word here, at twitch.tv slash playsevo1 and then sevo.com slash watch where you can find all of the games coming up we've got it's as you can see there in the news battlefield 4 as well as call of duty ghosts it's going to be a 500 hundred dollar tournament which will be broadcast you can find it there as along with dota 2 and a csgo but i'm helium with me was orbit you can follow us on twitter more so me because orbit doesn't really use his but maybe he gets some followers i'm at helium umbrella yeah. and orbit at orbit dota and you can sign us off in spanish if you'd like <laughs>
<risa> Gracias por mirar uh, nuestro stream y por favor síguenos. Uh, estamos aquí en twitch.tv slash playcivo1. Um, and yeah, casteamos. Uh, I don't even know how to say cast in Spanish. Cast but, also fine. Uh, dos veces cada semana en lunes y también en jueves a las 9 eastern. Um, and yeah, gracias otra vez. Ocho Central. All right, and we're going to be out. That's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> uh, I'll put on one more song, but that, that's it for the games tonight. Thanks.